Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noel McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ram. That was Asaf Adonai on piano. Asaf, what song is that? That's Guantanamara. Nice. Sweet. Well, happy Friday, you guys. Yeah, it is Friday, finally. Yeah. Ooh, but I'm going to be working pretty much all day here at MCAT, yep. followed by uh, more play rehearsal. So this, it's really coming into How, gear. How's it been going, Scott? There's a lot of songs that sounds like it was ripped off a lot of other songs. <laughs> and uh, well, if, if Inspired you, by. Inspired oh, by. Oh, yeah, yeah. A couple <laughs> songs sound like the theme song to um, Jurassic Park. You know, da da na na da da Yeah. You know that song? It's just like really inspirational. That's why. <laughs> yeah. That's it really awesome. does. And then there's, of course, Tipi Kaye, yeah, Kayo, kind of song. <laughs> uh -huh. It's ridiculous. They're all hokey songs. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, I remember the last play I did, it was all, like, commercialism type of song because it's during the, um, it's Miracle on 34th Street, oh, yeah. which yeah, is yeah. very commercialized uh, mm -hmm. Christmas mm -hmm. movie that they made back in the day where it's just like, oh, Macy's and Gimbals. Hey, hang yeah. out. <laughs> Macy's is still around. Gimbals is closed a long time yeah. ago. I, I'm sure there's, like, one Gimbals left, but it's, like, Maybe. in New York. It's I a toy a store. Oh, maybe there's one. Maybe in New York City. New York City is everything. No. No. But of course, uh, if you guys are looking to get out and about today, you might um, envy me working inside all day <laughs> because it's going to be raining like crazy. Although it is warm, it is currently 46 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 53, but of course, it's going to be raining. It already was raining this morning, just slightly, even more so later on this afternoon. And then of course, through Saturday, it's going to rain. Sunday, more rain. Monday, it's even going to rain even more. So it's going to be all this rain happening throughout the week with highs into the 50s and lows into the 40s. So it's going to stay a very um, mild, rainy, fall, um, pre-winter season. It's but very if, true. But also, there is a typhoon that has hit, I believe, I don't, you know, I don't really know where, what countries that has hit, but it is coming from the west. And so the Pacific Northwest is supposed to get hit with a lot of rain and a lot of snow. So that's why. So thanks, typhoon. <laughs> but of course, you can find out more information by going to nationalweatherservice.gov. But of course, if you want to learn more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. They added the site on Wix, so I have to say that as well. I know, it's terrible. It's terrible. So yeah, uh, we could <laughs> buy the license to wakeupmissoula.com, but I don't want to. But anyways, that's our website. Check it out. It's wonderful. Um, check out our wonderful podcast. I wouldn't say it's a new podcast anymore because it's kind of been here for the yeah. last two weeks. So check out our uh, recent podcast. Recent, um, I'll, perfect, I'll, I'll yeah. update it yeah. when I get the chance to. Um, I have another interview that I'm going to post up there. But, of course, you can like us on our Facebook page. We updated our nice little cover photo. I do love this cover photo. I do, too. That's Courtesy. absolutely beautiful. Courtesy of our very own Ron Scholl. I took it from Ron Scholl, and I said oh, we're taking it from Ron Scholl. I may it. also take it from Ron Scholl and save it on my phone. Yep. But, of course, <laughs> uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on our Facebook page, but to find out more information about us or to watch us live online, just check us out on MCAT.org. Yep. But of course, I do have a pr new program that I am going to be pushing for for a little bit, but I'm going to give you a little tease. And this is my Look Before You Speak um, series. And this is um, Steve Kluger, the host of Look Before You Speak, and he's interviewing Joe Nickel. And here is a little bit of this talking about some art. No one's telling the true story. So, uh, you know, it's just like Bill arrives at, I'm going to tell the true story. Yeah. And he tells it, a lot of it is told through metaphor. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and Here's through, uh, you know, so this, is a gr this painting is a great example. This is, uh, I believe it's called After Man's Extinction or, or something like that. Um, uh, but as you can see here, this is kind of an idyllic scene. Um, or at least the first things that you see in terms of the color palette. Um, there's a, a sort of wise-looking man standing next to the stream along with um, nature surrounding him. There's, there's a sense of harmony. And then you start to notice that in the background there's a dinosaur that's eating a person. And then <laughs> down here in the foreground there's this skeleton still clutching the... Um, the steering wheel of a car. All right, so um, 
Yeah, I love that. That's yeah, awesome. It, 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 just talking about some of the uh, um, local um, Montana artists, and of course, this is the, from the perspective of people who didn't draw the painting, and yes. that's kind of like what Steve Gluger really wanted to do. Rather than it just being an artist talking about art, he wanted to um, have people who love art talking about the artist. That's I think that's a great idea, and that show is super fun. I love and it. And up here in Mayor Times is today at 6.30 p.m., um, but we have some news items yeah. before we jump into what's new um, this weekend. We totally do. So I've got some trending news stories for you guys. So one thing that I thought was really cool was that, um, so at the Children's Hospital, let's see, I think it's called the Children's Hospital at Montefiore Medical Center in the Bronx in New York, successfully separated conjoined twins by the head. So if you guys will take a look over here, these two 13-month-old boys are conjoined by the head, and they were successfully separated after um, over 22 hours. So the operation took like 16 hours, and then, you know, everything else trying to like graft to make their heads whole, wow. and yeah, it took over 22 hours. So when the article was written, um, it was about like 7 a.m. for us and 9 a.m. for them. Uh, one of the babies had been out and he was totally done, and then the other one was still being constructed with uh, f having a full head. Yeah, so, it's like one gets the uh, the one is luckier than the other. It, when, it's so weird how it is. Yeah, so they were conjoined by or you know separated by this doctor. But if you guys can tell, look how stoic he looks. Well, he kind of looks like they took the picture after the surgery. I am. After 22 hours of surgery. Uh, they probably took it before, they probably took it after, but this has been the seventh separation surgery performed by this doctor, wow. and just the 59th craniopagus separation surgery in the world since 1952. And I don't know what craniopagus means, but this doctor is an expert in it. And I Connection would just by think, the head? I, that's what I Cranial. would think. Yeah, is that it? Yeah, separation by the head. Um, and then if you guys take a look too, I wanted to just show you guys this 3D model that they had. Um, of and where they had all the problems, you know, they were separating between that. So that's wow. kind of, isn't that crazy? You have to be so smart and so skilled to be able to do that. So congratulations, family, and good job, doctor. Yeah. Um, and then, you guys, this is another thing. So uh, I found, my last story I found on CNN, and this story I'm about to talk to you about, I found on BBC. Bob Dylan actually won a literature, uh, won Nobel Peace Prize in literature. And he is the first singer-songwriter songwriter to win the prestigious award. And he is also the first American to win since novelist Toni Morrison in 1993. Wow. Yeah. And so he won um, for having created new poetic expressions within the great American song tradition. And that he was chosen because he was a great poet in the English-speaking tradition. Yeah. Pretty cool. So congratulations, Bob Dylan. I thought that was neat. I didn't know that songwriters could win in literature. But I guess, like, well, he, Bob Dylan really invented a lot. You know, I guess he, he was a poet, and he didn't really know it. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Scott know. will be here all day, everyone. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I actually will be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh. And then my last... Um, thing that I want to talk about I found on the Mazulian and this definitely hits home for us so on October 14th 1891 close to 300 bitter Salish packed up what little they had and left their homeland forever so they were forced to march um, and it looks like they were forced to march under armed guards through the town of Stevensville um, and then all the way from the Bitterroot Valley to the Flathead Reservation where they've been forced to resettle. So a bunch of Salish people are going to be, yesterday, they started yesterday, and they are going to be re retracing the steps of this journey, but reversing it. So from the church to where they had landed and been forced to go, their new church, um, let's see, it was, I think it was called, hang on, let me find my, find it in my notes. Um, uh, ma, 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 ma. Okay, I, I can't find it. But, so they're, yeah. So they uh, moved to this church, and then so they were tracing their steps. They left the church yesterday, and they walked all the way from um, the church to Missoula, to U.S. Highway 93. So they stayed at the KOA, and then today they're going to be walking through Missoula all the way towards Chief Looking Glass in the Bitterroot. And then on Saturday, they'll make the rest of their journey um, to Stevensville and St. Mary's Church. Nice. Yeah, so there are a group of them that are making the entire trek, and then also there are people that are going to be joining them on different legs. So if you guys see them, definitely, you know, 
honk and support. They'll be walking from the KOL, KOA along Reserve Street and kind of like winding through the back streets of Missoula because they want to avoid traffic as there's a large group of them. Yeah. yeah. So look out for that. And I think that's really awesome and more power to them. So honk and support or wave or maybe hold a sign that says, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll be at work though. But yeah, so that's what I've got going on. I found my stories on the Missoulian, BBC, and CNN. Cool. Well, um, well, the arguments between higher taxes, education, are, are, are a hot topic. Um, but I'm not necessarily talking about the presidential debate. I'm talking about the flagship debate that <laughs> happened here in the studio uh, yesterday in the studio, in, in, in this room. Nice. And I have a video of it Great. right here. You name it if you renamed it. The morbidly obese men house. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll just call it the presidential house. Um, all right, it's your turn. Uh, presidential kingdom. If you could choose just one state in the USA to, um, to move the White House entirely and just to help the state be better, where would you? Uh, I want to move the Bright House. <laughs> it's so safe where it is, but to help states, I would send them materials if they need it. Send all the stuff they need at the moment. Question again, would you let any from anybody from across seas come into America? Across what? Across, across seas. If they come here legally, yes. Mm, I would not let anyone in here, especially if they are from ISIS because they would destroy everything. That same thing, I won't let ISIS. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? What if they're trying to escape from their house? Like, if they're ISIS shoot people, them down. no. But if they're people that are not ISIS. But what if like there's an, okay. Never. Like the immigration to yeah. Germany. Those people, yeah, I'll let them in. But if they're people that are actual ISIS terrorist people, like not, Stereotypically, but actual terrorists and stuff like that, I would not let them in because they're going to just hurt people. They're actual terrorists. What if it was a family? Yeah, so that that got really deep after a while. It, it like got the first super four deep. minutes, they were totally yeah. like, um, like, silly like, and, yeah, silly and, we, and like yeah. awkward. And then after a while, they really got into like really deep issues deep for issues. like 10 year olds. 15, 16 minutes. Wow. That's, the whole thing 16 minutes long. And I was just like watching it. And then of course the coordinator from um, Washington Middle School came down and he's just like, yeah, listen to this. And yeah. he's like, and, he's, and, he, and he's like, wow. Wow. <laughs> he's like, this is the mo this is the smartest thing I've ever heard these kids talk about. These 10 year olds are getting deep. Well, good job parents. Yeah. Right? That's <laughs> also, that's really funny. It was a little awkward at first. And then I was like, oh, oh my goodness. Yep. Hmm. <laughs> but I look forward to for the um, the end of the show when I have some city council stuff happening. Um, I also, what else do I have? I, I guess it's just city council. And then we're talking about uh, a $60 million project that the city is doing, it, uh, working with the Missoula Redevelopment Agency. So mm -hmm. um, we'll, 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 uh, I'll tell you more about that. And then, of course, we have a new episode of City Club every Sunday starting at 5 p.m. And, of course, it airs on channel 190 and not 189 because we have two channels. And this is a government kind of review channel, and they're talking about like housing and whatnot. And when we come back, we're going to have uh, Noel with events. Urging landlords to not screen out people because of criminal background alone, and warning them that that may in fact be a protected class and that may be discrimination. And so, making sure landlords are really looking at what their concern is. Is it the uh, background report in and of itself, or is it more than that? And if it is just that background report, really helping them look beyond that or find a way that we can address their concerns while still renting to that tenant.
Hey guys, we're up back. We are back. <laughs> we're up back. <laughs> we're up back. Uh, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, you? Will you be able to pay attention? <laughs> All right. It is Friday, so I've got some kids' activities, some stuff to keep you guys busy during the day, and then I have art and music for your evening. So over at Mismo Gymnastics, they have their family to fun time at 9.30. Uh, this is where they set up different um, obstacle courses, trampolines. You know, they've got their foam pits. And this is for ages walking to 12 years. And then Tiny Tales is at the public library at 10.30. This is for ages at baby's birth through 36 years. 36 years, 36 months, which is like three years old. Um, and they just sing songs. They hear finger, they learn finger plays, nursery rhymes, and hear stories. And then family story time is at 10.30 a.m. And this is for a bit of an older crowd. Uh, they do songs and stories and an art activity after that. And then preschool play group is at Ruth Zacro Sports Center. It starts at 11. This is at $8 a, 12 in, $8 a drop in or $12 for siblings. Um, and then they set up different activities and stations around the gym. And then parents and children get to rotate and choose what they want to do. Sorry, you guys. I'm getting ahead of myself today. Uh, Mandarin Starters is at the Children's Museum of Missoula. It starts at 11, so you're going to learn some Mandarin. And then they can head over to the culture room. They're going to learn all about China. Pretty cool. Public Library's got the watercolor painting class at noon um, for ages 18 and up. Yarns is also at the Public Library, also at noon. This is a group that gets together and they knit and they crochet and then, you know, they gossip and eat their lunch. And it sounds really fun. Over at the Zach at 3.30, they have a Friday afternoon comic club at $95, or it's $85 for members. A six-week program, October 14th to November 18th. Students will create single and multi-panel cartoons to be included in Zach comments. Uh, emphasis will be placed on character development, irking, inking, environment, and storyline using graphite, ink, tracing paper, watercolor, colored markers, colored markers, printmaking, and more. That sounds great. At the YMCA, they have family fun time at 3.30. Uh, they've got lots of comfy chairs for adults and then fun activities for the kids. And then over at the Zach, they've got another thing going on this evening. It's their annual Festival of the Dead group art show. It starts at 5.30. They've got a, you know, they've enlisted all these artists to give their interpretations of Festival of the Dead. So you guys can check out their gallery about that and all the artwork. And they also have a free silk screening night happening at the same time. So you can just bring a t-shirt or a tote bag and they will adorn it with a Day of the Dead festival, thing, festival you know, emblem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I have some music. There's an Irish music session at the Union Club at 6. Larry Hirschberg will be playing the Tens Food Vineyard and Winery at 6 o'clock. Lockwood is going to be playing Missoula Brewing Company in Highlander Tap Room at 6 o'clock. And then there is an, uh, at Stage 112, they're having Erosion Festival, which is Doom Metal. And so it's two days. It's tonight starting at 6. Uh, they're having St. Vitus, The Skull, Witch Mountain, Disenchanter, Mother Crone, Stone Elk, The Old Ones, Chirama, and Cannon. Those are all super sweet band names. Um, and so that'll be at Stage 112. And then John Floridus is playing Imagination Brewing Company at 6. And the Missoula Haunted House will be at the County Fairgrounds. That'll be at 7 o'clock, and that's going to be happening several days up until Halloween. Worldwide Cinema is at the Public Library at 7 o'clock. And then Penny Me, Penny Isimo, I always say it wrong, is going to be at the University of Montana at 7.30. This is um, all things piano. They're going to have like a piano off, piano rockouts, uh, featuring nine pianos, over 30 pianists, and a rollicking good time. Yeah. I miss all the good stuff. I do too. Camp Days presents uh, sub pop record recording artists at Level Up. They'll be playing at the Palace for 10 bucks at 8 o'clock. The VFW has got some bands, The Smokes, Kickboxer, and Tiny Plastic Stars. That'll be at 9 o'clock. It's uh, $6 for 18 and up and $3 if you're only 20, if you're 21 and up. The Bathlanders got their uh, I Heart, the 90s dance party. It starts at 9.30. Then Jack Shriver will be playing at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30. Russ Nassa and the Revelators will be at the Union Club at 9.30. And the Mike Murray Band will be at the Top Hat Lounge at 10. And of course, I, I do have to give a little uh, uh, shout out to uh, Maddie. Yeah. Uh, uh, Maddie Alvins. Um, he, uh, we were watching um, Missoula Live the other day. Uh -huh. It was just happened to be on because Missoula Live. We, um, Joel was interviewing one of the guests, mm -hmm. and it's just like, hey, Maddie, 
what do you think about that guy right there? It's like, well, if you got a haircut. <laughs> but that's just a little side note. Nice. Maddie's really fun. She came into my she work is, the other day. Yeah, she's, she's hilarious. Great. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, was, have... she was at MCAT all day, and she's yeah. just laying on the couch. She's like, Maddie, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, you shouldn't be so sad that you got fired from the peas farm. It's like, I didn't get fired. It's a seasonal job. And it's like, Maddie. Whatever, Maddie. Whatever, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of really fun high schoolers that come and hang out with us and just, like, hang out at MCAT. Uh, we just got to make a video. Yeah. Like, of like just a reality show. Of all we the should. Children. They're hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, they, I don't know, they always give us all the cool insight on the teens. Like that Zootown Clown, we wouldn't have had no idea who it was except for the teens. No, the teens knew it, like, right from the start because some stupid teen bragged about it. I was like, I thought it was funny. I'm a clown. <laughs> Uh, violence. Anyways. All right. <laughs> but that's what I've got for community events for you guys for Friday. We're going over to Musical Notes with ASAP 509 now. Well, um, this year is going to be probably one of the most different Musical Notes I've ever done because there wasn't, there's not much to say about our guest on today's Musical Notes. Our guest is an old show from the past known to the world as DC Follies. And there's... The first image there, the actor on the right, that is Fred Willard. He was the host of this program, and that is Elvis Presley on the right there. What? Fred Willard and Elvis Presley. <laughs> it's like a declamation. <laughs> yes, it is. DC Follies, even though it's, they're probably in reruns, it's a syndicated sitcom which aired from 1987 to 1989. It was set in a Washington, D.C. bar where bartender Fred Willard would welcome puppet characters of politicians and pop figures of the time. And um, even though Fred Willard was the only live actor that appeared regularly, each episode would at least bring in one guest in the bar. People like Robin Leach, remember um, the lifestyle of the rich and famous? Mm -hmm. Or Bob Uger, the baseball great? And of course, Betty White. <laughs> you can't forget Betty White. And there's Whoopi Goldberg that we were looking at right here. So this show had a lot of fun caricature people. There's President Gerald Ford, and I think that's Paul McCartney on the left. <laughs> and some of the characters looked more like the person they were portraying than others. There's no awards or anything. This show only lasted two seasons, and um, it mimicked political figures, pop culture figures, and it's similar to the British series called Spitting Image, created by Sid and Marty Croft. They're well-known puppeters in the United States that created shows like The Banana Splits and H.R. Puffin Stuff, which I talked about last year. There's Sylvester Stallone with Fred Willard in this image here. And some of the other regulars or people that have featured is President George Bush. Uh, the first one with Santa Claus and people who appeared were like Whoopi Goldberg, Reverend Jesse Jackson, Michael Jackson, Don King the boxing promoter, Madonna, Dolly Parton, that was a sight, <laughs> um, Geraldo Rivera, Sylvester Stallone, Oprah Winfrey, Pope, Pope John Paul II and also Prince Charles and Princess Diana at the time, and there are just so many other people that appeared on this show that I wouldn't be able to mention, but uh, your audience can look it up. They may have, like, shows on YouTube of DC Follies, and you can have fun and a look back in time. It only lasted two seasons, 33 episodes, and uh, Fred Willard was just such a delight with all these puppet characters. I'll stop on that note nice. there. Thanks, That's Asa. such a weird looking show. Yeah, it, it, it so just, crazy. it was, it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was nice. fun in its time. I'll have to look it up. I'm sure it's still on YouTube around yeah. somewhere. Nice. Can you imagine what it would be like if DC Follies is running today with oh. the people today? Oh, wow. <laughs> They'd have a field day. <laughs> like Hillary Clinton and Donald yeah. Trump, to yeah. say the least. <laughs> Yeah, and like the Kardashians. Well, the, yeah, so like and Miley all the Cyrus. other people. Yeah. Here's another side note. Um, That'd be fun. Uh, Sesame Street has a uh, a drump, which is uh, you know Oscar the Grouch. Yeah. He, there's a political figure that looks like Oscar the Grouch, but he's orange, and they call him Grump. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I hadn't heard of that. Yeah, one. That, that's a more recent thing that just came out. Sesame and, Street is very forward. Yeah, I watch it all the well, time. Well, I think they're getting a little too satirical for my taste. Sesame well, this Street? show wasn't. Oh, yeah. um, they made just. Fun, you know, they, it wasn't like the because they made a Game of Thrones just, one. They made a Game of Thrones of the, of Sesame Street. 
wasn't it just the um, the Cookie Monster? They do they do some skits on no, Sesame no, no. Street. No, no, they have a whole entire like thing. Everyone was looking like a, a generic character, and you know they made it like uh, I don't know. It was, I think it it's ridiculous. hilarious. Sesame Street is one of the longest running children's shows, and they have to find ways to reinvent themselves. Well, uh, you know, I don't they're know. On PBS, like PBS uh, is not funded. Are they assuming that kids are watching Game of Thrones? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. They might. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I forgot to mention also they had presidents like uh, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan. They had Woody Allen, Cher, mm -hmm. and finally Nancy Reagan and Barbara Bush. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. So just look it up. They'll have fun. But, I mean, kids are, the internet is so vast and, like, parents are at work. Maybe they can't afford child care. So kids are looking up stuff online. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they're watching Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. I don't watch it. So I don't know what happens. Uh, you can, you know, I guess you don't have to have the internet at home. <laughs> no, no. I don't know. It really, it, it, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Okay, but of course, uh, we do have a brand new art clip from our very own Rick Phillips, and uh, this is happening at the Clay Studio, and it's going to end at the end of this month. So we're going to show you this a bunch of times <laughs> until Great. the inevitable end of October. We're back and I've got some events for your Saturday. So this is what's going on. So we have our farmers market still. These are going to last to the end of October. So a, we have a couple more weekends left. So we've got our farmers market at the Red X's. That is from eight to one. Our people's market, which is on Pine Street uh, outside the Marbar, as well as next to Jimmy John's, that'll be from nine to two. And then our Clark Fork market down in Karis Park, that'll be from eight to one as well. There is a fall festival at Outdoorsman Church at 10 a.m. This is put on the, by the American Cancer Society's Relay for Life. Um, so it'll be from 10 to 4 for a day of fun. There'll be hay rides, a petting zoo, crafts, games, prizes, face painting, a bounce house, pony rides, raffles, s'mores, food vendors, craft vendors. It's going to be a, you like a fall hay day. So it sounds great. So admission is $4 per person. $15 for families of five or more, and all money will go to our Relay for Life 2017. So it's at the Outdoorsman Church. This is located at 12208 C-O-R-T-E 12. Wow. So I'm going to leave that up there for a second so you guys can, can either write that down or get a screenshot of it or whatever you need to do. So that's where it's located, Outdoorsman Church. You guys can find my events on MissoulaEvents.net if you need more information about that or didn't get it right when I showed it. At the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, they've got a kids event that starts at 11. You can learn about hunter safety, use laser shot, and explore their visitor center. It's from 11 to 1, and it's located at 5705 Grant Creek Road. At the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium, starting at noon tomorrow, they've got a lecture and discussion and activities surrounding um, you are what you eat. So they're going to learn about how arthropods can become what they eat. Many butterflies become poisonous to predators or unpalatable as a defense mechanism. And so they've adapted to their environment to be able to successfully digest toxins and then become toxic themselves. What? Which is pretty cool, yeah. So a drop-in is between 12 and 2, and you can learn all about that process. 
<laughs> I, I, I was just thinking about like a, a parent butterfly just talking to his kids. It's like, eat your poison. I don't want it. It's like, you eat your poison or you'll be eaten. Yeah. Like, it is. We're going to get eaten anyways. What does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be a really funny skit. Or like right. an animation. <laughs> <laughs> we may, that may be coming soon. <laughs> coming to uh, MCAT New Year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, at Imagination Brewing Company, they're hosting Soft Landing Missoula's halfway fundraising party. Um, so they're working towards their goal of $30,000. So they will be at Imagination Brewing Company. You can go there and uh, give donate money to them. Soft Landing Missoula is in charge of bringing their refugees to Missoula. So they're trying to open up a uh, new workshop and a new location and facilitation place. So they're raising money for that. At the Wilma Theater, uh, starting at five, is Home Resources Benefit Auction. So tickets are 50 bucks. Throughout the evening, you'll enjoy um, locally sourced dinner and drinks, a uh, silent auction of sustainability crafted art, furniture, furniture, local services, and more. It'll be a live auction and then a cake for every table. That's pretty sweet. So this is the sixth annual Home Resource Banquet and Benefit Auction to celebrate Missoula's thriving culture of reuse. At the Public Library, there's a Big Read Capstone event uh, starting at 5. So this is put on by the Public Library, but it's not actually there. This is going to be at the <coughs> Montana Distillery. And so the Cap Big Read is a, it's been like a month, and it's pretty much to get a, a lot of people engaged in reading. And so the Big Read theme for Montana has been Native Americans in the Wild West. And so they're doing a capstone and a celebration for that tomorrow. So this will be at, uh, it'll be at Montana Distillery. And they'll also have a cash bar featuring drinks, especially made for the themes of love medicine, which has been the book that they've been reading throughout the Big Read. We've got some music at Imagination Brewing Company. Daniel Herbert will be playing at 6. And then Jeff Carroll will be playing at the Brewing, uh, Missoula Brewing Company, also at 6 o'clock. And then Erosion Festival has got their day two at stage 112. So the bands are Acid King, Most Generator, Thorax, Cron Goblin, Mammoth Salmon, Teepee Creeper, <laughs> Swamp Ritual, Piranha Dog, and Wizard. Those are also some sweet band names. And so this is Doom Metal. I don't know what that means, but it sounds like it's going to be pretty cool. And then we also have our haunted house. This will be at the county fairgrounds starting at 7 o'clock. And then at the Crystal is Open Country Masquerade Ball featuring music by Tom Catmull. Starts at 7 o'clock. And so what it is, it's music and mini readings of new work by some of Missoula's best loved writers as well as a silent auction. Um, and so drinks and snacks are available for purchase. All proceeds will support Open Country Reading Series and Open Country Press. Starting at the Madison Street Bridge, or meeting at the Madison Street Bridge, starting at 7, is a lunar cycle to Missoula Maze. Um, and so there will be lots of people. You can dress in your Halloween costumes, bring lights and music, and they're going to bike from Madison Street Bridge to the Missoula Maze, which I don't know how far that way, how far away that is, but it may be a trek. <laughs> so be prepared for that. Maybe don't bring kids. <laughs> and then we've got some music for your Saturday night. Iron Eyes, Mass FM, Rooster Sauce, and Cannon will be at the Palace Lounge at 9 o'clock. Absolutely with Chris Moon at the Badlander also at 9. Cash for Junkers at the Union Club at 9.30. Jack Shiver will be at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30. And then the Hawthorne Roots will be at the Top Hat Lounge at 10. As always, you guys can check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, uh, the Missoulian and the Independent for more events going on in, in your community. And another big event that's happening tomorrow on Saturday from 1 to 5 is our animation stop-in here at MCAT, but of course, why do I have to say anything? I have a PSA I made just for you guys, so check this out. MCAT Stop Animation mm -hmm. Drop-In is back. Mm -hmm. And every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m., kids 9 to 13 can make their own stop animated feature for only $10. What's $10? What are you doing? Sir, you're gonna have to leave. I'm shooting a PSA. PSA? Seems more like a commercial. Let me try to sell this thing. If you have a kid between the ages of 9 and 13, you can drop them off at MCAT's Saturday Drop-In Animation. $10 for four hours of fun between 1 and 5 p.m. Excuse me, you're going to have to leave. I'm doing this thing right now. I did better. You shouldn't be doing that at all. 
Classic Scott. Yeah, Classic Scott. Okay, so anyways, I'm going to switch gears, and we're going into some city council. Woo! So, of course, uh, in public safety and house, <laughs> uh, uh, not, not house, but public safety and health, uh, after several meetings and through investigation of operational, regulatory, financial, and business matters, the city and Echo Compost negotiation Ne negotiated purchase of all the compost facilities assets for one million two hundred fifty thousand wow. dollars. Um, and of course, the city council uh, authorized the mayor to execute the asset purchase agreement on uh, August twenty second, two thousand sixteen. And of course, staff will pr provide uh, they provide an update. They never really talked about it much. They talk they dwell on it for like five minutes or so. It was, it's pretty cut and dry. It's you know it happened. It's gonna happen. But of course, <laughs> <laughs> oh great. Okay, look so, forward to that, you guys. Okay, yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> they were talking about it a long time ago, and now it's like officially forward movement, and they have a price, and that's how much it's going to cost to get that area. So it's kind of like, and of course, if you don't know what the echo compost is, it's the area right next to the water treatment plant just by the new Walmart. And of course, if you live in Missoula, you know what the new Walmart is. <laughs> and of course, and here another thing that's public safety and health is together, the Montana Department of Transportation and the city of Missoula, they're investigating over $60 million dollars in transportation systems this year. That's awesome. Yep, and of course, um, from MD MDT, and they, they provided an in-depth presentation that's been running on MCAT, but of course, I'm just gonna go through it real quickly and just kind of show you guys. Um, I'm gonna give you a list of the things that are gonna be upgraded. It's gonna be downtown signal upgrade, so if you guys haven't already seen the, like, the, um, the, uh, the curbs, the, madness. the sidewalks, yeah. and the madness in the downtown area, mm -hmm. they're improving the signals. Um, and they want to be more ADA accessible because I just saw that a couple of the um, the crosswalks I did, the button push has a, a wait voice that comes out. It's like, wait, wait. It's for people who are blind. And ADA, um, I guess, usually just for people who are blind. Yeah. I think it's really a uh, great resource as well. But of course, besides that, they're doing some also street and bridge improvement, which include the Russell Street, the Madison Street Bridge, Orange Street Interchange, Van Buren um, Interchange, and Higgins Street Bridge. And then, of course, here are some of the photos in no particular order. And this is the Orange Street Interchange. So if you haven't got a chance to see this, this is kind of, they're going to be putting in a roundabout, kind of improve the flow of traffic in the, uh, just off highway, um, off highway 90. I-90, just as you get into Orange Street. It's going to be a nice little turnaround. They just cut down a bunch of trees. I watched them cut down a bunch of trees along along this area right here. Wow. And I was really sad. But it looks like they're making improvements because I live over there, and they're definitely making improvements. Yeah. Were, were a lot of these trees in the uh, in uh, heavily, uh, I guess, cemented areas? No. So what it is, is, if you guys can, we'll take a look again. So it looks like, so right here, is the Providence Center. Oh. And so this is the sidewalk and then the street. And so these trees were really hanging, overhanging over the sidewalk. Um, and so it looks like that they, you know, they removed the trees. Looks like they'll probably remove that sidewalk. The Providence Center has a huge parking lot. So they could probably remove a lot of that parking lot to yep. make ready for the roundabout. So it looks like they're making improvements. I've been seeing them excavating things and yeah, widening roads and cutting trees down. So it'll happen. But of course, Orange Street is the only interchange that's um, being implemented. It's also the Van Buren um, Rattlesnake Interchange. Okay. So let's take a look. So as you can see, they're gonna put in two roundabouts, one for incoming um, from the eastbound and then an incoming from the westbound, just kind of uh, open the flow of traffic. And then what's gonna be in the middle? Oh, uh, that's the highway. Oh, this is the whole highway okay. right here, and roundabouts yep. can be on either side. You know how it goes off to yep. the sides. Yep. Yeah, no roundabout is going to affect the highway traffic at all, so you, no one has to worry really worry about that. I and think of that's course, a great idea. Yep. And then the next one, you know, roundabouts are in now. Mm -hmm. Missoula, you know, Super it's, in. It, Missoula likes their fats. <laughs> it's a fat fat. Anyways. Um, Madison Street Bridge, they're going to be improving that, and they're going to like alter the trail, trying to figure out how they're going to um, update it in a way so it can be more of a um, easier way to get to the under bridge as well, because otherwise you'd have to go all the way around to Kiwanis mm -hmm. Park, and they're just trying to improve that trail right now. Um, the next one is the uh, Madison Street, Madison um, Street. Well, actually, more of the Madison Street Bridge. I wanted to kind of show what they have an idea because they're going to widen the bridge, as you can see. Um, you can see they want to do a, a larger area for people who are biking and walking. Um, you know, you have more cars being able to fit more comfortably, and just to have a total width, width of sixty-eight inches. Is no, no, sixty-eight, 68 feet? feet. Yeah, sixty-eight yeah, feet. Yeah, inches is yeah. too small, Scott. Yeah, it's too small. <laughs> it's just way too small. Um, and that's about it. That's that's basically what's going on. 
on with your uh, public safety and health. Nice. And I have admin and finance. I have cool. two quotes from there. Um, the department, um, I, last week, I was talking about um, the department of, head of new department of redevelopment, housing, and economic development. It's, it's kind of like they're smishing all this kind of stuff together. And they, they're appointing a new head, which is Ellen Buchanan. Uh, this agreement establishes the role of the city and MRA. It also specifies that the director will uh, still work under the supervision of MRR, MRA board for MRA projects uh, and under supervision of the CAO for housing and economic development responsibilities. So basically, she has the same title as before. It's just that she has more uh, things to do, basically. Uh, so <laughs> this is Mayor Johnning and kind of explaining a little more. I'm going to cut him off halfway through because his quote kind of goes on for like, I don't know, he, he, he has a lot of run-on sentences. Our memorandum of understanding does, um, and this has been approved unanimously by the MRA board, is provides for that government structure. It makes it clear that any additional um, funding associated with Ellen's duties as Director of uh, Housing and Economic Development are uh, separate from those TIF revenues. Um, it provides for, uh, it provides a mechanism for talking about how we hire that position in the unlikely uh, event of a water landing, um, no, in the unlikely event that uh, Ellen were to leave. Um, it provides for, um, as necessary, a uh, mechanism for us to talk with one another, um, city council, uh, administration and MRA board to address any concerns as necessary. All right, so of course I'm just good enough for like kind of like right there. And basically what they, the reason why they wanted to do this is to just kind of like have it more of a, a city um, appointed thing. Well, MRA still has the uh, freedom to uh, make come up with their own projects. They don't have to necessarily go through the city a lot of times because um, they're development services. They develop housing and all this stuff and they of course they already know that they meet their zoning requirements so they don't have to waste time by going to city council meetings to do it. This also helps uh, it, it be a little more easier to communicate between uh, the city and MRA by having uh, Ellen Buchanan. Of course this is Ellen Buchanan, uh, the new director of uh, the MRA uh, new position of course. Her job title hasn't changed and here she is. Uh, and and I, I think there's capacity to, 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 to handle all of this. Um, I think um, having Aaron as the director of the Housing and Community Development Division makes all the difference in the world because of her level of competency. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable that we can keep the balls in the air and keep juggling. And I'll just work a few more hours. <laughs> All right, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, you go, girl. That's, that's like a you know like a typical Montana response is like oh, I'll work a couple more hours, whatever, whatever. It's cool. Mm -hmm. So of course, Alan Buchanan will remain director of MRA. She will just have more duties than economic development, housing, and redevelopment, which seems interesting uh, if you really think about it. Because uh, when you develop something, you have to develop something before something becomes redeveloped. So oh, in yeah, a lot yeah. of ways, <laughs> it's like redevelopment kind of seems like it should be kind of like more of an outside thing because mm -hmm. it kind of like gets another look, another pair of eyes. But if it's the same person redeveloping something they developed in the first place. Interesting, yeah. How I wonder what the changes will be from yeah. that development to the redevelopment. Because 10 years from now, people are going to be like, ha, I can't believe I put that in there. Yeah. It's like, because, you know, um, even like uh, 40, 50 years ago, they used aspartame. Not mm -hmm. aspartame, that's in soda. But... Uh, asbestos mm. as a uh, material in housing to keep it warm. They just like, it's so great, it's uh, wonderful. And then, and they then didn't people know, are like, dead. People yeah. Yeah, getting cancers and stuff. Yeah. But it's so interesting, like the development, redevelopment, mm -hmm. um, just like aspect of things about redevelopment has to be done, like it seems like every five, 10 years. Yep, um, it really does, especially with like technology and I don't know, yeah. all the updates in the world. I feel like technology is a big one. Yeah, and especially our neighbors. World, yeah. Our neighbors are their first call, they're, uh, you know, they, 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 if you have a broken computer, you can call them, blah, blah, blah. That's not a commercial. Um, but they uh, asked us if we wanted to be part of their fiber. And fiber optics is like high speed internet, really mm. awesome stuff. And we're right next to a computer place. It's like, we, it's almost like we're like living in a cave next to a mansion. Oh my gosh. Of technology. That's crazy. And so are we going to be part of their fiber? Well, uh, it's expensive. It's expensive. So, no, we're not. So, we'll, we'll see about <laughs> that. Anyway, uh, they, 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 asked, they asked Joel, and then, of course, Joel has to, you know, he has to decide whether or not he wants to do it. And, you know, fiber is something that Missoula is desperately in need for. Mm -hmm. And it was like a big deal, especially when, I, when we first started talking about um, mm -hmm. um, city council stuff and yep. just like kind of the stuff that they're doing as well. 
Um, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, and fiber is the is what makes like all of our computers run fast and everything like that. Yeah, it's right? just high speed yeah. internet. Yeah. Okay. Like cool. the next like after fiber, it's go like I don't know Google fiber is Google a big fiber. deal too. People want Google to put fiber in towns and all that stuff, but they're gonna stick with like the bigger <laughs> cities. <laughs> One day Google will be our president. <laughs> well, we just have to like we have to be very alluring because people people do love Missoula. People like they people do. who are not from Missoula especially like to come to Missoula. They do. They like it for that. We're kind fishing, of still in the past. Fly fishing, yeah. hiking, kind of wild west, and all just a bunch of just like recreational outdoor mm -hmm. stuff. Just like, oh, I'm gonna go hiking a mountain. It's like, well, don't die. <laughs> Watch out for bears. <laughs> oh, oh don't go to Bob Marshall because you'll probably die. Most likely. <laughs> I always tell people that. Like, I don't know why. I'm just so, like, I'm just so cynical about it because there's nobody. Uh, I don't know. It's like my catchphrase. It's like, well, you know, there's always somebody who dies in the Bob Marshall every year. It's it's rough terrain. It's like seriously rough terrain. And so that's Scott's catchphrase, everyone. Yeah. Well, there's if you go to the Bob Marshall. Dies. You'll probably die. <laughs> See you never. <laughs> See you never. <laughs> bye bye. JK, but not really JK. <laughs> but, We're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, if you want to find out more information about uh, City Council mm -hmm. and uh, where you can find videos, like I found videos, you can log on to the City of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. I always go to your government, I go to City Council, I, you know, I zoom in just for you guys. You click on Agenda, Webcasts, and Minutes. Zoom out just a little bit so you can kind of see the whole entire web page. You can see all this stuff. You click on agenda and it brings you to a nice little, uh, nice little page where it usually comes with a video. But of course, this uh, meeting has actually occurred until 1:30 p.m. this afternoon, and you can watch it live on MCAT um, channel 190. Uh, and you can watch it on our website um, MCAT.org. Which is just wonderful. But of course, I'm going to jump right back to Wake Up Missoula. You can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula for more information about where you can find our episodes and more content as well as log in onto our Facebook page. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. MCAT also has a Twitter page. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information or watch us live, you can check us out on MCAT.org. Yes. MCAT.org is quite <laughs> an amazing uh, resource for a lot of people. And I think it's uh, really good that you can watch all any watch us anytime anywhere as long as you have internet um but also you we do are going to be live streaming all next week uh we have volleyball and football basically happening at the same time next week and the next and the week after that and then we're done and i'm done with the high school football and volleyball sports and he's gonna be so happy yeah, i'm gonna be happy for a little while and then basketball will start oh yeah i know but whatever it's, it has to it's work <laughs> but um yeah uh it, it we had a great show uh -huh. uh, this to kind of reflect um okay so let's see city we club is some... on sunday yep um, city club's on sunday we've got missoula we have mcats drop in yes. uh stop motion animation camp tomorrow one o'clock only 10 bucks from one to five yep. or else it's five dollars you just want to do a half day yeah if you just want to check it out and just be like hey this seems kind of cool and usually at the kids when you drop with the kids i'm gonna do a half day and then like the parents come down for a half day i'm just like uh the kids like go away yeah so i'm in the middle of something when they get into something they stay into something they love it's it crazy yeah. they love this stuff yeah um yeah so uh it's really mm -hmm. that's pretty much it I know, you know? yeah thanks for tuning in with us you guys it's friday as always you guys can check out missoulaevents.net for more of your community events going on this weekend lots of good music going on lots of artwork um and it's gonna be rainy yeah it's a lot so. of good reasons to stay inside and um like or go out or just sit at your favorite bar all night yeah you know jump between bars but make sure you uh Bring have raincoat or something mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, umbrella is kind of a hassle a lot of times unless they have like one of those fold up umbrellas you just put in your pocket but then if you reach in your pocket you might get shot i don't know and then you just get wet yeah and shot it's a crazy world out there you guys it's a crazy world <laughs> but of course uh for wake up missoula i'm scott ramp and for wake up missoula my name is noel mcavoy here's asap adonai on piano and we will see you guys all on monday